Okay, two, 2004, form B, question number one on the AP calculus exams. Uh, it says, let R be the region enclosed by the graph of Y equals the square root of X minus one. So if you see what that one looks like. Shifted over one, and it looks like the square root function. The vertical line X equals 10. So let's say here's 10. And the X axis. So this is R. Okay, we're going to find the area of R first for part A. So the area of R is just your top curve minus the bottom, which is just 0. So square root of x minus 1 dx. I'm going from x values of 1 to 10. Okay, you could do a u substitution for this one. You could let u equal x minus 1. du is just equal to dx. So it would be u of 1 to u of 10, square root of u, so u to the 1 half du. And u of 1 is just plugging in 1 here, so I get 0. And u of 10 is plugging in 10 to the u, u equation, so you get 9. Okay, this would be pretty easy to integrate. So I'd have u to the 3 over 2 with the 2 thirds out front from 0 to 9. So 2 thirds stays out front. I'd have 9 to the 3 over 2 minus 0 to the 3 over 2. This means the square root of 9, which is 3, raised to the third power, which is 27. So it's 2 thirds of 27. 3 and 27 reduced to 9, so you get 18. Okay. I believe this was on the calculator portion of the test, though. So you didn't have to do all that work. You could actually just plug in, hit math, and then 9, and use your finite integration button. So we'll do that on the ones from now on. All right, part B. Find the volume of the solid, solid generated when R is revolved around the horizontal line Y equals 3. Okay, Y equals 3 actually intersects right on that corner. Because if you plug in 10 to your original, you have 10 minus 1, which is 9, under a root, which is 3. All right, so Y equals 3 is here. So I'm going to rotate around. Now what happens when you rotate around this horizontal line is you have, I don't know, it's kind of hard to draw. So you have a solid piece with kind of like this trumpet cut out of it. So that part's hollow. All right, so we need to do outer radius minus inner radius. So if I start from my line and I go to that first curve, that's my inner radius. My outer radius goes from my revolving line to the outside part of my figure, so there. So my inner radius is 3 minus the square root of x minus 1. And my outer radius is 3 minus 0, so it's just 3. So when I set this up, my volume is going to be pi times outer radius squared minus pi times inner radius squared. So pull the pi all the way out. So I'm going to have 3 squared minus 3 minus the square root of x minus 1 squared dx, and my x values go from 1 to 10. Okay, if you plug this in, uh, you're going to get 212.058 or 0 0.057 if you truncate. Alright, and the last one, part C, so let's find the volume of the solid generated when R is revolved around the, line, the vertical line, x equals 10. All right, so let's look at a, our drawing. We'll, let's go on the next page. Oops, 1 to 10. There's 3 there. So now I'm going around this vertical line, x equals 10. So whenever you go around a vertical axis, I always think it looks like the y-axis. So we're integrating with respect to y. So we need everything solved for y, or solved so that we have everything in terms of y, I guess, so solve for x. So I'm going to square both sides, so I get y squared equals x minus 1. So I get y squared plus 1 equals x. Okay, that's what this is. So x equals y squared plus 1. It's another way of writing that equation. All right, when I go from my line 
out to here, that's my outer radius. In fact, it's the only radius. We don't have an inner radius because we don't have any part that's like hollowed out of this problem. So this is r. And r is just 10 minus, I always think right minus the left. So 10 minus y squared plus 1, which is 10 minus 1, so 9 minus y squared. So when I set up my volume equation, it's pi outer radius, 9 minus y squared, squared, from my y values, 0 to 3. Since I'm integrating with respect to y, I need y values for my limits of integration. Okay, you can go ahead and FOIL all that out. Um, if you FOIL all of it out and solve, or just put it into Math 9, you get 407. Sorry, 407.150 for your answer. Okay, and that's your solutions. Okay, so let's see where we had our points on this one. So on part A, we got a point for having the limits correct, so 1 to 10, one point for the having the square root of x minus 1, one point for your answer of 18. On the next one, we had one point for having the limits and constants, so 1 and 10, and then pi. One point for having the inside part correct, the integrand. One point for your answer. And on the last one, we had one point for having your limits and constant correct. One point for the inside part, the integrand. One point for the answer. Okay, so we got all nine points on our problem.